accomplice to one of these murders and he's out of his mind. Didn't you get any sense out of him? No. Oh, he keeps raving about some sort of creature. Joe, <laughs> can you tell me what happened? <laughs> it was a horrible creature, sir. With huge eyes, sir. Oh, with the, with the wings. The wings, sir. Oh, let me alone. Let me alone. From this old house, some evil thing was spawned to bring terror to the surrounding countryside. What was Professor Mallinger's gruesome secret? And how was his beautiful daughter involved? Look at that moon. Does it make you feel romantic? I'd have made the moon to make me feel romantic. No, no. <laughs> First, you've got to catch me. Blood Beast Terror. Peter Cushing, Robert Fleming, Wanda Ventum, guest star Roy Hudd. What could have caused those injuries, Doctor? They could have been inflicted by some sort of animal. Now, uh, Tom Gat's been missing for a week. <laughs> what kind of monster lived in this prison? What kind of creature brought terror to a whole community? <laughs> Hello, folks, to day 21 of the 31 Days of Howling Beasts. I am your host for this one around, uh, Mr. Gary Hill. Um, probably the most, uh, the most host, the most voice you'll hear on these, these, uh, being these great 31 episodes. Uh, I'm here today for another, with another, uh, British joint for you guys to, uh, sink your feelers into. Uh, I say that because I'm doing the Blood Beast Terror from 1968. Um, I'm not going to give you the IMDb plot synopsis because it's fucking dog shit and they give you the spoilers for the whole fucking movie and I'm not a fan of that. So basically your plot, your plot synopsis is, um, Peter Cushing is in the film. He plays Inspector Quinnell and he, uh, is investigating murders, uh, about town or where men are being bludgeoned to the heads and scratched up and killed and, you know, basically mutilated and uh, blood drained from their bodies, and it's a big mystery, and blah, 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 why would they want to drain blood from their bodies? Um, It it turns out that, you know, this is not an oral murderer. This is a winged creature of some kind, and uh, they're they're very frantic about this, and nobody believes them, because who would believe a giant winged creature would kill people? Um, Yeah, so that's the shmuel of this one. Uh, Robert Fleming plays Dr. Mallinger, who's an uh, entomologist, who's an expert in insects. That means they're an expert in insects, of course. And um, he plays, helps me, he's helping him with the investigation. And he's very passive about this. You find out why later. Um, uh, Claire um, Mallinger is played by Wanda Ventham, who um, people might know. I remember watching this on the Sci Fi Channel reruns. Uh, the TV show UFO she was on. And uh, later would be on the BBC uh, Sherlock series. She's actually Benedict uh, Cumberbatch's mother in real life. So that there, there's that. I guess that's the the Sherlock the Sherlock connection, uh, if if you will. Uh, anyway, the, the the murders keep going on and on, and the, the bodies pile up, and um, they have no idea what's going on. Of course, our our doctor is being very passive and being very uh, secretive about his theories about what's going on. And I'll explain why in just a couple of minutes here. Um, it, 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 it ends up, uh, it, yeah, it ends up getting kind of crazy because basically this giant winged creature is a giant moth person. And I'll just get this way here. Cause this film is it's here, but it's not, it's not great. It's, I'll, I'll say, first of all, this is, if you read the INDB trivia, they say this, uh, this is one of the worst films that, these guys are worked on, according to them. I wasn't that bored with it, but the, the, one of the biggest issues is when you're doing a film about a giant moth creature, uh, I realize it's 1968, 
and you're not going to see it very, very much. They do a good job of concealing, you know, what it is by, you know, leaving clues behind to say, oh, what are these giant flecks of, of insect, you know, because uh, basically this, this person goes from a woman to a moth and during the metamorphosis leaves behind residue uh, of this and it's, of course it's it's human it's it's human size so they're all baffled and blah blah blah, blah except for the doctor because he knows precisely what's going on spoilers because the, the IMDb plot synopsis gives it all away so I'll uh what while I'm in here now he, uh, he'll give it I'll give it away a little bit <clears throat> it turns out to be this girl who's posing as his daughter that he uh he created this monster for, for from genetics, and she she could go back and forth between woman and, and moth, and get her kicks in by by murdering people because she's she's very sweet and innocent. But then all of a sudden, you know, you find out that she's a moth who likes to gets the pleasure of uh, killing men and sucking their blood and collecting their blood for another moth creature, I guess, to mate with. Because that that's a a plot point in this movie is it. it he, um, our doctor is collecting, um, because there's another entomologist in this movie who, well, a guy who collects bugs. You see, in the very beginning of the film, he's going to Africa to get these moths, these very special moths for, uh, the doctor. And he's going to use them to create another large moth, I, I'm guessing, to, to mate with the female moth that's posing as his daughter. I guess it's never really explained as his actual daughter or something he created, but I'm pretty sure, about 95% sure, it's something he created. And, um, she seems like there's, there's a point in the film where she's going to go, they, they go out to the country to go finish his work. Um, they have a private basement for all this, you know, and, um, she sees a, a, a sexy, like farmer guy and she's, she gives him a look and you can tell right then and there that like, she's not innocent in this and she, she's gonna get her blood any way she can and get her kicks any way she can and, that that that's a much uh when the thing becomes like when its intentions are are known that it's kind of like a living entity and she's becoming more and more frustrated with the doctor because the doctor says that he needs other materials including fresh virgin blood to make this thing come alive. She gets the the idea of um k- kidnapping Peter Cushing's actual daughter in the film who who they, they go to the country to go look for the doctor because it is rumored that he is there and. He's in hiding, trying to finish his new moth person, and yeah, it, it it ends up to where you see the moth, the moth of the doctor, of course, betrays you know the moth girl, and she she destroys him. But the thing is, this is 1968. You thought the beast of the yellow the yellow knight looked looked bad. Um, this beast looks like if you ever seen the mega guns mega Godzilla. Or the Mecha Streisand episode of South Park, I mean, where Robert Smith shows up as as the moth. That's what this thing kind of looks like. Like big, bugging red eyes and um, big, ugly, but black. Looks like the, the claw of so- like the, the, the claw of, of a wolf with like some kind of metal on the thing. And it just looks terrible. And why would you show this on screen if you didn't show it on screen for like the whole time? Just show like the claw doing stuff and like maybe like at the very end show like the head or something don't show the whole body of this thing especially when you're building the new one and you get to see the whole body and it looks like shit but then you got an excuse to say hey this one's still being formed yet so it's gonna look like shit so probably one of the worst looking creatures you'll ever see in a movie that's it's a real big downfall this film really could have been something if you um Gave it a little more mystery what the what the creature is, and like maybe showed random attacks like um like the beast in the cellar. You know they showed like the uh, the actions happening, but not showing the monster itself. And I would like to see more of that. But in this film, with it actually has a pretty decent story, and I, I wish and, and I'm sure, I, I think there's been movies like this to where the the, the thing like a, like a like a mantis or something is doing some killing, and then go back to the female form. Help me out, people, if you know the title of this film, at least, or films, you know. I would like to see this movie made in, like, 1978 and just watch it go fucking crazy. But it's made in 1968, unfortunately. Peter Cushing is Peter Cushing in this film. Everybody else plays their roles okay. Um, 
yeah, I ain't got a whole lot more to say about Blood Beast Terror. Uh, you can find it on Tubi for free. Uh, it's a little long. I wish it was like an hour and 15. It runs about an hour and a half. And uh, it's got that wacky 1968, you know, Twilight zone kind of, you know, a lot of pianos and, and, you know, big strings. And soundtrack works kind of well, actually. But the film itself is, is kind of a kind of a dud for what it tries to do and just doesn't execute it all that well. Uh, but the Blood Beast Terror, I would recommend watching it once, telling me what you think, and then uh, don't watch it no more, man, because it tried to do something, and I think it, uh, I think it failed, unfortunately. And that, that makes me sad. I want to see a film like this succeed, where it has such a strong themes and such a strong plot to it, and just takes a shit <laughs> you know once you know the creature's like self-aware and just you know yeah it just becomes real dull and it has a really stupid ending too and uh moth to the flame is all I'll say nobody knew the godzilla played dirty i got it, 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 it's yeah stupid real fucking stupid but uh blood beast terror uh please check it out i don't know if i'll have a curator for tomorrow so i'm gonna do another one myself and this time it's a yeti film from the 50s, okay, called Man Beast. And I'm looking forward to watching this this probably guy in a suit thing. Never seen him before. All these films I've never seen before. So I'm, I'm looking forward to watching this film and talking about it. And hopefully give you guys a recommend. I can't recommend this, though. Uh, it's The Blood Beast Terror, 1968. Watch it on Tubi. Don't pay for it. Just don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do it, man. But tomorrow, Man Beast... I think 1958, 56, right around there, on the next installment of the 31 Days of Howling Beasts.